so here we are back again and I've blocked some areas in but as I was doing that and actually appraising my work I realized I forgot his ear which is behind this great big ball of fluff over here and I want to get that feeling of dark and the light shining on this line I'm also going to start finishing off uh, this area with some finer strokes but I'm not going to work it to death because pastels will actually fill up the paper the chalk dust will fill up the pores of the paper and it's oops just happening here and I've also just found my rubber, so I can show you that you can rub off pastels quite easily, but it does smudge. So it's hard to do it in an area where you've got a lot of pastels. But for here, for instance, I can actually rub off some area of pastel and actually create shapes, but uh, try and avoid the smudging. In fact, that could go. So there you go. So we can actually rub it out. So that's good. And so I'm picking up my gingery colours again. I remember if I thought this was too gingery. A little bit, it's a bit on the pink side. And I want to find my areas of colour. So again, I'm trying to keep uh, going with the direction of the hair. I think that's the main thing about animals. And sorry, I'm just closing my work. Right, so I'm just adding some of this slightly darker brown to be his mane and trying to follow what that mane's doing. And I'm just getting a little bit aware that the paper is filling up. So I'm going to add some nice hairy bits here and layer on that colour. And I have been reduced to using black actually because I did want to get some of these darker areas. And you can see that's very intense. It's actually called intense black, but I do need that for some of the darker areas. I'm not going to go crazy with it, but what will happen is the colours will layer on the paper. So here we have, I've got a, oh, that's the same brown, I was going to say it's a different brown, I don't think so. Get the difference between his darker mane and his lighter mane. Is that a different brown? Different brown. It's a bit greyer in fact, so that would work quite well down here. And again, I don't want to work it to death. So we've got some shadow here and I might bring out my blue a little bit just to add some of this dark blue purple just to make it a little bit more interesting and indicate light and shade. And so now I'm going to work on the eyes and you can see with cats, big cats, small cats, all sides of cats, they have this nice almost marking around their eye. So I've got this uh, pale yellow ochre and I'm just going in here and following what the fur does. And it changes direction on the nose and as I say by looking you can really understand what's going on in this lighter area here. I'll just have a little bit of white in there. Very intense white but it does give that feeling of shape. And again just following some of the fur around there. And the lightness here. I'm just using the white really to be a tone, not white. So I'm going to go over it with this Naples yellow colour and start layering it on. You can see the white has disappeared a lot in there and I'll just pop it around here too. And we want this furry muzzle and then finish off this eye again. This has got this nice white thing here but he's got his nice eyebrows. And then I'm going to go up here on where his shorter fur goes into his magnificent mane. Now I think I do need a little bit of white there. And it's just a little bit there, just to highlight some areas. And I think I need a little bit here. And again, it's this differential touch, so you can be quite pale. And then you can go really quite dark with it just by pressing that a little bit harder. So I just want a little bit of that going on there. And we've got some furry bits over here. So it's just generally adding tone and I think I want a little bit more in there. So I'm using the side of the pastel here to catch the, uh, the lightness there. And hopefully the, the lighter uh, Naples yellow colour I can put on top and that will be more like a furry bit and there is something happening in there so I'm just going to go on 
very lightly put on the fur what it's doing there the main thing about that area is in fact the shadow and it's funny when you actually um, spend time with a painting or drawing or something oops that's mixing up uh, <clears throat> you grow quite fond of the subject I think it's rather groovy and I'm really cross with myself as usual my painting has got a little bit bigger than the thing I haven't caught that area there um, I always find when I start drawing, it starts out small and then my subject gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And unfortunately, the loveliness of his mane has disappeared a bit. So I'm just going in there. I want that nice yellow ochre in there too. A bit of a punk rock style of hair. I'm going to bring that in a bit. I'm going to use a dark brown if I can find one. Because I don't like that shape there, so I just want to go in there and alter that a bit. But I am finding actually the pastels on the paper is getting full, so I am probably going to stop soon. I must rescue his poor ear, which is over here somewhere, and he's got a bit of fuzz there. But you see that went a little bit green, and if you can see, because I put blue on there, but no bad thing. So I just want to catch some of those areas there. So yes, this paper is now getting full and I don't know if I'd want to do too much more to that. A few little ear tufts in the right colour. Yeah, it's going yellow. So the main takeaway from drawing and painting animals, I think, is to think about uh, curves into straight lines because you're doing a portrait of a living thing and each animal looks different. Like uh, seagulls are different from ducks, are different from robins. So you really have to understand how uh, the animal works. So a little bit of anatomy. George Stubbs spent six months dissecting a horse just to understand what was going on. <clears throat> All his neighbours complained, apparently, which I can see why. Um, because it got a bit stinky, but he had it, um, he did it like Leonardo, I mean, proper dissection to understand what all those muscles were doing. So it's quite useful if you are going to draw or paint something to look at how the animal's constructed underneath. And you can get everything on Google now. I think I'm going to finish that. The one thing I am going to do which is a bit different, is I'm going to add a little bit of lightness to this area here. And I don't want to do it white. I want to actually define the darkness of his mane over here with a lighter colour. I'm still going to keep it as a vignette and he's very hairy hair he's got. So it goes out here, doesn't it? Just so using the background to help your drawing. And oh, there's a lot of mane going on there. So I'm just lightening this area up just by using a pastel on its side. Unfortunately, this is a lilac colour, which is all I can find, mainly because I didn't want to use white. But that will actually use the paper to define him. And it comes out here, so it comes out there. I'm catching the back of his body. I don't think I want to put it over here because this is the lighter side of his face. And I'm just going to add a few more bits of mane. You know, using the side, but add strokes. And there we are. I think I'll probably leave it now because I know if I work on this more, the paper is going to get full and it's going to start tipping over the edge of being too full and being able, unable to actually put any more pastels on there. You can choose any animal you like, uh, your favorite pet or something like that. I would probably now spray this and uh, put it away in the vault, but um, I want to sell it to that man who runs the Lion Pubs, I think. And I will do another little quick video about uh, how to draw cat's eyes.